Fantastic. Hello, I'm Melanie Chrissy. Thank you so much for joining our Netlify Power User Series. This is day three. We've been doing learning all week um, about how to improve your workflow. But today we're going to be talking all about performance at scale. Uh, so thank you for joining. If you need to find me, I'm online. I'm, I'm easy to find on Twitter or LinkedIn or the Jamstack Discord community. Please do reach out. I'd love to hear what you are building. I'm going to be your host and your MC. But today I'm also doing presentations and live demos. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. And I'm really excited to share with you today. Bit of light housekeeping. Again, everything that we've got today is going to be recorded. It will be sent out after the event. So you'll be able to review all of this on your own time. Uh, we'll also have the slide material that we're presenting today available as well. So um, no promises on exactly when that'll go out, but it will go out soon after. So look for it in your inbox uh, early next week if you haven't already received it. But yes, 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 it will be recorded. No reason to stick around if something comes up and you need to hop off. That is A-OK. -okay. Uh, we're also going to be doing Q&A at the end of the session if we have time today. So look out for that Q&A in the Zoom chat. Uh, you can ask questions in the chat, but we may not see all of them if you put them in the chat. Uh, so if you have something you definitely want to get addressed live, make sure you put it in that separate Q&A view because I will be looking through those at the end of the meeting. Uh, and that will be the easiest way for me to keep track of the, all the questions that come in. The other thing is uh, we are abiding by our Jamstack code of conduct today. Um, so if somebody could post that code of conduct link in the chat, that would be wonderful for people to reference. But basically, keep it bright, keep it friendly, uh, be inclusive. You know, we're, we're not here to bully each other. Uh, don't say anything that you would be ashamed of your boss or friends or family seeing that you said in the chat. Um, this is like a professional learning environment. So, you know, have fun. We can engage with each other and chat along, but just be mindful of the way that you present when you're, when you're typing uh, during the series. So, that is all of the housekeeping bits for the day. Again, today's topic, staying fast at scale. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having way too much fun with the at scale, scaleness, just scaling forever. Uh, but we're gonna be talking about how to observe and improve your app's performance. This is personally dear to my heart, one of my favorite things to talk about. I am a major web performance nerd. I feel like I'm learning new things in this space every day. Um, so very, very glad to be here with you. We also have a special guest joining today. So Aaron Bassett is here from New Relic. We're going to be getting into a fireside chat live demo situation with Aaron about halfway through uh, the series today. So thank you so much, Aaron, for being here. It's just been really cool learning from you. And I, I can't wait to see what you have to share. If you need to get in touch with Aaron, Aaron is also on Twitter and available online uh, for you to reach out to. So just setting the stage, because the format for this session is going to be a little bit different than what we've been doing throughout the week. We're going to cover three main product topics um, and a couple of different theme areas. Uh, the, the format will kind of break out into like formal slide sharing, live demo, more conversational, back to slides. Um, so, you know, we'll be on our toes a little bit on this one, but I want to give you a sneak peek of a really exciting feature that we're rolling out for Netlify's enterprise customers. Uh, the log drains for New Relic are available for us to play with now. So I'm going to give you a, a really early look at those before most people have even had a chance to check them out. Um, then I'm going to talk with Aaron, who is the new Relic build plugin author and maintainer, that open source project. Uh, he's going to share with us about his experience, how he decided to build the plugin, what it was like to be the build plugin author, and how it works. Um, we'll talk a little bit about New Relic's instant observability quick starts as well. So that'll be more casual, fireside chat. We'll, we'll share our screens a little bit and uh, do some questions between me and Aaron, just kind of catching up. And then at the very end, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about performance optimization and how Netlify's high performance edge network might help you with that. Uh, so if you want to stick around and learn about how to make things faster at the edge, we'll get to that before we wrap up with Q&A. So when I think about performance, web performance fundamentals, I know everybody kind of has their, their take or flavor on this. Things that come to mind for me are need to be able to observe it. And then you need to be able to optimize it, make it better. Uh, but eventually you're going to have to scale it. So that's also kind of just the themes to look out for throughout the material today. So thinking about log drains, 
exporting log data for better observability. When I say observability, it's a fancy word. <laughs> it really just means that, you know, I can look or read or find or parse the information so that I can understand what is happening on my application. Who is visiting that application? What is their experience like? What, uh, how long did the page take to load, right? You have to be able to grab that data and trend it over time, dig into it so that you can really observe what's happening with your application. Uh, so that's what we're talking about when we say observability. You may also think of analytics, um, you know, all of those things that you need for troubleshooting and diagnosing. So when I think about performance and observability, I kind of like to think of them from two sides of the house. Uh, and these are both complementary solutions that you need to know about if you care about optimizing your web performance. One of them is real user monitoring. So this is observability in terms of who are the real users hitting your application? How are real people from around the globe hitting your website? What is the experience like on their network? Your Wi-Fi speed is different from my Wi-Fi speed. Your device type is different from mine. So all of that real user behavior, how people are actually hitting your application and the traffic load over time, you need to be able to observe that. Um, you need to be able to see the way that that is flowing, ebbing and flowing over time uh, so that you can understand whether or not you're holding up under the real scale of your real user traffic, real user monitoring, or I like to call it RUM. Um, and then there's also this component, which is really where my background is. So I'm just excited to be able to touch on it today, which is synthetics. So synthetics, meaning we've got a controlled environment. It's not real users hitting my site. It's automated bots. Maybe I'm scripting the bots to act like a user and take behaviors that would be like a real person, but I can turn those bots on and off. And the benefit of having a synthetic solution in your observability package is that you have the ability to control for variables. So you can look and see, okay, I just made a change in my Netlify app today. I shipped some code. Did I make things worse? Uh, if, if everything is exactly the same and all of a sudden my performance is getting worse or, or better, I can see that with synthetics a little bit easier than I might be able to see it with RUM because it's more controlled. Not that you couldn't observe things getting better for all your real users over time, hypothetically, just a little bit easier to get granular and see those uh, shifting changes when you've got a synthetic solution. So our friends, New Relic, who are here with us today, they do offer uh, tools, a browser tool um, for RUM, and they do have a synthetic solution as well. So you can do both of these things using their tool. But even if you look at just like the free tools out there on the internet, like I always think about like Lighthouse scores, you know, there are ways to run your lighthouse that are synthetic and controlled where you're getting more consistent data every time and it's easier to see the before and after and then there are ways to run your lighthouse that are more based on real user traffic to get those scores um, so that's just a fundamental like foundational thing i want to make sure everybody understands off the bat so as we get into these topics later you'll know what's rum what's synthetics so now if i has something that's a little bit kind of like RUM, uh, but it's really server-side analytics. So when you are running a Netlify application, you're, you're hosting it at the edge, Netlify is gonna be able to tell you what type of traffic is getting to your application. Maybe it's bot traffic, maybe it's real users, but we can show you what we're seeing in the server logs. Cause even when it's serverless, there's a server somewhere, right? So we get all that information back and we give you some high level data about where around the globe your traffic is coming from, the top countries that are visiting your site and your unique visitors over time. If you have this analytic solution enabled, um, it is not available on all plans, by the way, but if you wanna add it, it's easy to do so. But even the analytics that are in Netlify, I find to be kind of limiting for performance diagnostics. Uh, I'm limited in how far back in time I can go. I'm limited in the granularity of my dashboards. So if I suddenly start to have a problem from a specific location or with a specific type of request failing, I don't get a lot in the Netlify analytics to handle that. I, these are great for keeping an eye on you know, your traffic over time and you can get some interesting views into your bandwidth and how it's being used, but it's really not the tool set I want for performance optimization observability. Very limiting to me. Um, so yeah, you also have these serverless logs. So if you're running functions in your application, 
you're going to get the functions data available to you. If by default, I think it's for like the last seven days or the last 24 hours, you can get in here and diagnose if your functions start failing. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of filtering you can do, but again, we're still not revealing all of the functions data to you. Uh, it's, it's pretty limiting. And if you're going to be, be doing like some serious troubleshooting, you're going to want a better way to surf through this. So here's the problem we got. Teams that are scaling, <laughs> teams who are growing, you need a more robust tool set, right? You want to be able to get in here. You want to hold on to your data for a longer period of time so that you can see like, oh, how are we doing versus last month or last quarter? You want to be able to isolate specific attributes so you can diagnose a problem by a status code or a specific location. Uh, you're going to want to set up ca custom dashboards for your team, you know, like, I don't know if people do this anymore in the remote world, but it used to be like you'd go into an office, there'd be a big TV screen and all the executives can come by and see like, oh, look at our traffic from this location. Now we have those dashboards that we share, you know, over the internet with each other as well. But like those dashboard views that people can see in real time and just see how are we doing today? What is the traffic looking like today? Um, you're going to want to create that. And you're going to want to be receiving alerts if something goes wrong. So, you know, Netlify, wonderful solution, doesn't have the ability to text you, page you through your ops system uh, out of the gate. You know, if that's something you want to set up, you're going to need a little more powerful tool for that. So this is why log drains can be such a powerful solution for teams that really care about performance and observability. Uh, we give you the ability to take all that functions data, analytics data from the application, put it into this solution called log drains, and then pipe it to whatever tool you use. So New Relic is the one we're going to be looking at today. There are other places where you can send this data if you need it. What I like about New Relic is it's super simple to connect with an API key. Once you get it over there, you can explore all of your data and you can set up dashboards and alerts. So I'm going to attempt to switch to share my screen so I can give you a live demo of this. Uh, bear with me just one second while I do a little moving things around. We're going to get into demo mode. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to reach over for my Google Chrome. And I'm going to share my screen over here and show you a little app I built yesterday. So nerd alert. Um, I bought myself a custom domain, which is webperf.com, perfect.com. Uh, and this is a super simple little application. Shout out to Phil Hawksworth for building this template that I just uh, basically forked and uh, styled up the button here. But uh, the application is super simple. It's hosted on Netlify. It has a button where you can fetch a joke. Um, you can't trust a ladder. It will always let you down. Goodness, Phil, really, with the jokes. Can we do one more? Why does Norway have barcodes on their battleships so when they get back to port, they can scan? Goodness gracious, Phil, where do you get these jokes? Um, so we've got the little application here, and you can see over in Netlify that I've got my site ready, and I can get to those function logs, um, so I can look at the specific fetch joke function, and I can see in real time, oh, look, those are those button clicks that I just had right there. If I wanna look at the last day, I can do that. It's all available, but again, super limited, not great for trending things out, et cetera. Uh, in addition to my functions, I've got my analytics on this account, so I can look at that for the last 24 hours. My web app is not as popular as yours is, so there's not a lot of traffic here, uh, but I can see some page views that we're getting over time and uh, you know, top locations. But again, if I wanted to filter by like, show me just the page traffic from Singapore, I don't have any way to do that in Netlify, right? So let's set up a, a log drain. It's as simple as going over to the site settings and I already have it pre-configured here. So it's a little bit of a cheat, but when I navigate down to log drains, I can integrate with a log drain service. There are several available here. I can decide whether I want to send over just my traffic from analytics or just my functions logs for debugging that button. And the only thing I need to connect this is a new Relic account, which you can get for free, and an ingest license. So when you're over in uh, your new Relic account, you're going to click over here to your API keys and you can get that key, which is very nicely started out for me. So it's safe to demo here. And you're going to copy that first one, copy key, not the key ID, just the key, and bring it back over to Netlify, type it in. When you hit save, you are good to go. So now all of your log data is going over to New Relic. 
you can see right away, this is a much more granular view than what I had in LFI alone. I can add specific columns to the table if I want to sort out my functions from my traffic. If I want to sort out the refer URLs, I can do that. Um, there are also different tags that come over that I preset in Netlify. So if I want to add a column for the service, I can do that. I've got status codes here so I can see if there are any errors. Uh, this is just a much more uh, operational view of the same data that I can get in my Netlify account. Now, what if I want to set up an alert so that somebody can wake me up in the middle of the night if my web perf 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 app has a problem? I can do that by looking at the attributes that can build a query. Uh, I can say maybe I want to see all of the situations where the status code is page not found, because that's not good. That means I shipped something, people are finding a page that uh, there's no content on it, the URL is broken, they've got some link rot or something going on, right? Once I build this view, I get the more granular, just the logs that have that status code, which is awesome. And it gives me the ability to come over here and create an alert condition. So I can say, uh, alert Melanie, when there's a 404, I can come down and like adjust my threshold, decide how many failures I want before I uh, have a problem. And I can create a new policy and say, this is my 404 policy, save it. And you are off to the races. Uh, now you have the ability to configure a channel to send those alerts to. And uh, that is the whole workflow end to end that you wouldn't be able to do if you just had Netlify and not a solution like New Relic Connected. So super exciting stuff that you can do with log drains. Uh, I will actually show you one more thing. Um, so over here in our slides, I've got a preview of something really exciting that's gonna land next week, which is our quick start. So we looked at how to get your data from Netlify in a New Relic. We looked at how to create an alert on a specific type of criteria. This is how to build your custom dashboards. And we've even reduced some of the lift for you. Um, so it's gonna be really cool with this quick start. You're gonna be able to just hit a button and have some really common dashboards built out for you. So look out for this landing soon. Whew, that was a lot that we covered. Uh, I'm really glad to kind of move into our next part of the conversation today, which is going to be all about build plugins, and we're going to get into a little more casual chatter mode here. So, Aaron, if you're still on the line with me, uh, let's get ready to talk about real user monitoring <laughs> for performance <laughs> metrics. That was great. You covered so much in short, such a short space of time as well. Like that was that was a lot of information there. Um, one thing just on the the logs that came up actually at a at a, a meetup recently with somebody who um i think it was actually maybe a runaway web spider or something was absolutely hammering their website and was generating a lot of i think 500 or 404 errors which are obviously getting sent as logs across to to new relic and like many services new relic we charge for data ingest etc mm. um and one of the Great things with the logs is we have um, drop filters. Oh, so I was saying to them is like, oh, if you if you don't care about that log information, like you know it's you know it's essentially spam log files mm. that are coming from this runaway process, just create a drop filter. Like, okay, the drop filters run after the data reaches New Relic, so technically we've ingested it. We don't charge for it. If we drop oh, that's it, that's nice. Charge. Oh my gosh, that's so, so convenient. Yeah, and it's the only time that we don't actually retain any logs. Like that data is gone, gone. <laughs> it's not a oh, I, I misconfigured my drop filter. Can you restore that data? It's like oh no, we don't we don't have it anymore. So just wow. they're handy. They can see, keep, keep your keep your bills low, but just be careful with them. Um, but yeah, the that, all that log information was was I'm really looking forward to getting play with it as well. I know it's it's so new. I only got access a couple of days ago too, so. It's gonna be fun to, to try the log drain. Yeah, big same. Man, I'm curious about those drop filters. I can see a lot of situations where that would be really helpful uh, to be able to say, I never wanna see this data again. So that's cool. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you, what is it that got you 
in the mode to build a plugin. Cause the way I remember this happening was like a few months ago, I got a message from Jason Langsdorf, who's our uh, VP of developer experience here at Nellify. And he was like, mm -hmm. Aaron has built this super cool plugin. I feel like we need to do something with it. Uh, can you all check it out? And it was just like already in such great shape by the time that I saw it. How did you get to that process? Um, what was the experience like for you and what oh. made you decide to do that? So I have, I have a bit of a confession, if I'm honest. Um, I hadn't used Netlify before I built the plugin. I was aware of Netlify. Really? I had some, yeah, yeah. I had some friends who'd worked there. Um, I, I'm in developer relations. Uh, I obviously keep an eye on what your DevRel team is doing because they are killing it. Like they're, they're got so many awesome things going on. It's just one of those ones where just, I just hadn't had a chance to play with it yet. Um, and also I'm a Python developer. So, and most people think of Netlify, they think of like the Jamstack, they think of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So it was a whole new world for me. It really was. It was like, oh, okay, so I've not used a service before and I've got to write the plugin in JavaScript. Um, but it's it's a testament to how easy your plugin API, I guess, is to work with. Because I, I didn't set out to write the plugin as it is. I set out to kind of create a proof of concept for New Relic to go, hey, look, this could be a fun thing we could do. I'm going to put together a proof of concept and I'll give it to our node team to actually create the plugin. And it was like, no, I can, I can just do this myself. Like this is, this is pretty easy to work with. Um, so yeah, it, it grew out of, I think the dusty domains campaign you all ran for a while that we partnered on. Um, I was like, yeah, I, I want to be involved in this. And then it, it just grew kind of organically over a couple of days. So um, yeah, well done on a, a, a very well-structured API. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. And for anybody who doesn't remember uh, Dusty Domains, this is like uh, fresh in my memory because like Lynn Fisher just did an amazing job with like the design for the page and everything. But it was basically like as developers, like I, I relate to this so hugely, like we buy domains for our side projects and then we just mm -hmm. totally forget about them. I have several. I have one like lovable customer experience or something or like like I just bought WebPerf and I'm like, gonna have to deal with that at some point. <laughs> but you get these domains and then like you kind of neglect them and maybe you never shipped anything. So it was this really cool initiative to say ship something on that domain that you forgot about. Yep. And then we will raise money for a good cause. Um, so that like every year I get those awesome. domain renewal emails for you. And it's it's just it's it's just like an annual kind of uh kind of nudge or or just reminder that I'm like, oh yeah, I have way too many side projects. I probably should finish yeah. at least one of them at some point. <laughs> totally. Ghost of side projects past. I, yeah. Uh, it's like, it's always a thing. And then you, when you finally do decide like, okay, I'm going to let it go. Like you have that, that like remorse of like, oh wait, but like, it was such a good domain. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you came in through that and then experienced the API. Uh, mm -hmm. And then like, at some point I imagine you had to like ship your code over to somebody at Netlify who was like, yes, this works and we can add it to our directory. <laughs> like, what was that workflow like for you? Yeah, it was great actually. So um, all, our, a lot of stuff in New Relic, but especially stuff in, on our team on developer relations, we, we program in public. Um, so all of the code was already open source. Um, it was already like pushed up to GitHub. I um, had somebody from from Netlify very kindly do a little bit of a code review for me before I create the PR. And then it was just create a PR against the the plugins directory um, repository on on Netlify. They did a code review, made sure um, that I was following at least some best practices and and not making it too Pythonic. Um, and then it was merged in and suddenly it was live on the Netlify plugin directory. Um, so yeah, it was, if you're reasonably familiar with GitHub and, and NPM, then it, it was a pretty straightforward kind of process. That's exciting. Yeah, I love, like, it's so cool to see what's in the directory because some of the plugins are more like what we've got today, which is like a, an integration mm -hmm. between two applications. Um, but a lot of them are maintained by people as a side project or uh, just a little idea that they had. Like not everything has to be a really formal integration. Like if it's just something that you built mm -hmm. for yourself that you think that other people would find useful, uh, that's also a good candidate for the build plugin directory as well. So it's just super uh, fun to see what people come up with and um, 
Yeah. I'm so glad that you were able to do that. Do you want to <laughs> show great us learning resources oh, as well? Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, get yeah, yeah. I was just saying it's if, because they are all open source and the fact you can go and you can view the plugin directory and it lists the GitHub repositories of all the plugins that are currently there. Yeah. You can go and you can view the, the the source of like the other plugins. Like that's, I learned a lot about how to structure my own plugin and things I may want to include just by going through the source code of, of ones that already were in the directory. So like it's oh. a great learning resource as well. So is that an invitation yeah, that people should spy on your plugin and learn oh, from it? Oh, please do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm not sure about learn from it, but but go check it out and tell me why I can improve. There's probably a better way. I love it. it. I love it. Continuous improvement. That's like very in line yeah. with like, you know, growth and web performance mentality. Uh, cool. Well, yeah, if you if you feel comfortable sharing your screen and showing us a little I bit about do, how yeah. it works. I'm just going to go, I'm going to steal uh, this. Uh, yeah, you steal it from me. Share yeah, from I you here. Can... There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so um, let's drop filters. You can see I was looking up as you were talking here. Um, but yeah, uh, on our first thing on the kind of the plugin is really to talk about a little bit of what it does. <clears throat> you mentioned kind of real user monitoring um, in your, oh, of course, uh, see now? Yeah, real user monitoring and what you were talking about before in log trains. Yeah. And the way in which we do that with um, New Relic is we install what we call a browser agent. It's essentially a little snippet of JavaScript um, that goes on your page. Hopefully, as close to the top of the page as you can, um, because it does a lot of timing things, you know, um, and we want to start that monitoring as close to the beginning of the page load as possible. So we're getting like accurate times for things. So we try to, there's a couple of HTML tags that really have to come um, before, but as soon as we can, we try to inject this um, into the page. If you're using any of our server side agents, they'll interact with most of the popular web frameworks and can do this for you automatically. But if you have like a Jamstack application where you are deploying a static site where there's not, you know, there's in my world, it would be like, there's no Django or there's no Flask, or I guess mm. like, it'd be like, there's no Express or something serving the pages that you could have automatically inject this script into, then you're left in a situation where you have to either manually add the script in or um, I know uh, Netlify has the ability to, to inject it into like uh, strings, into headers, et cetera. What the plugin does is it's going to do that um, injection for us automatically. So it's going to look for any HTML files in our uh, dist folder and inject that script into them. Um, or the other thing it's going to do is also record any of our build events. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be your on pre build, on, on build, post build. Um, your on success, your on error, your on error, and your on end. So anytime any of those builds are triggered, it's going to send that information to um, New Relic. So really quick run through how it's. I've got a little project set up here as well. I do not have a custom domain. I am so sorry. Uh, I, I really feel can. like I've, I've let you Lauren, die in here. <laughs> you know, you can buy a custom domain through Netlify if you need to. Yeah. That yeah, is not I, I think next time think I, I will, I'll, I will be ready. That. I'll be ready next time for this. <laughs> um, so I, I don't have it installed at the moment. If we, if we open up uh, a page here, for example, let me go look at, it's just like, I love some this. Ipsum, if I yes. view the page source, you know, I do not have the browser agent currently installed. Um, but if I go back to my site here, I go to plugins and go to the plugins directory and this is what we're talking about. Like all of these plugins, all of these plugins yeah. oh are all open source. Like you can go view the source for any of these. Some of them were really, I think actually the Minify HTML was really useful for me. So, so I have to, I had to learn how to read HTML from the disk um, and where that's going to be stored and how to find where the, the uh, publication directory is. You know, so really good um, learning resources if you want to see the source of everything else. Here's a new Relic one. Um, so I'm going to click install. I'm going to pick my site here. I'm going to hit install and we're done. Like it's really kind of that simple. There is some configuration that has to happen. Um, you know, API keys, that kind of thing, uh, which can be my site settings. Like yourself, I've kind of cheated and I've already, oh, I already put these in here. They should be done in my environment variables, you know, so it's like you're like a kind ID. Again, that ingest license key, all the stuff we, we saw previously. I've already got mine all configured there. Um, there is instructions um, on the plugin where you'll find all these keys and things. So um, pretty detailed instructions there for people who want to, to follow along. And then if I go back to my deploys and let's trigger a new one, 
it's going to run through and it's going to like just redo the same deploy for me that, that we currently have previewed here. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's going to also use the new Relic plugin. So we should see in like our deployment log as it goes through, we'll see it like, you know, calling out the different events that, oh, it's triggered this event from the plugin, that event from the plugin. Um, so yeah, here we go. Loading we'll plugins, there. great. You're like net define plugin. Yeah. So at least that works. We don't love it's working. We can see our pre-build event, our build event, our post-build. Here's actually like deploying the sites. We're uploading all those static HTML pages, you know, our success or end, et cetera. Um, and if I go look, I should get a little display summary at the top here. Get one plugin run successfully. And we've got some results. You know, it's telling me, oh, we injected the browser agent into 301 pages. So let's go have a look here at our preview again. You know, we'll grab, let's just grab a different page. And we'll go view source on this one. And there is our agent now injected yeah. for us. And everything it does is it adds this release tag, which is quite handy because it means any errors or anything like that now that we see in New Relic will be tagged with this release. Um, so it's, this is ah. going to be the release ID, which is our Netlify context production. And then this uh, string here is made up of our the git commit SHA for this um, release, as well as our Netlify build ID, I believe. It's all in the documentation. <laughs> it's one of those IDs, but it doesn't yeah. mean we can, we can identify exactly which build it came from. Cool. And then um, what we'll see at the bottom is on some of these, not all of them, so this one doesn't have any. Let's go look at another page to see if another one does. Um, oh, let's view source in this. What, I've, what I have is it generating JavaScript errors on some pages, but not all ah. pages. Um, but we'll see that whenever we get to the new relic side. I could be here for a while picking random pages to find <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. And then on new relic, we have um, quick starts, which you mentioned briefly for log trains going to be launching next week for, for that um, particular integration. We already have one for the builds. Um, mm -hmm. It's under Netlify builds. Um, quick starts are pre configured dashboards, alerts, things like that. For, so I've already set one up for the Netlify builds. I can go install. It's going to take me through a nice little install process. You know, here it's telling me how to install the, the plugin or asking if I've already installed that and view the installation docs. I've already done installation. We just watched that in the video a second ago. So I'm going to skip it. It's going to run through, do the installation for me. And that's, it's installed now. I can go back. Let's just refresh this so we can see here. So this is my uh, Netlify dashboard. So it's made up a bunch of different tabs. This is like my summary tab. We can see that build I just triggered a second ago. We get like, you know, our, our stats breakdown, our average page load mm -hmm. times. You know, I can see traffic volume. Let's make this over a longer period, let's say for the last seven days. You know, so you can see like my traffic volumes here. Um, a lot of JavaScript errors. As I said, I'm just injecting random ones into pages. And I have a lot of traffic on this website. We go to traffic and see just how much, you know, working at like, uh, yeah, uh, 1.59 million page views um, in the last week. And the reason for that is I'm actually using another thing that we, we touched on a little bit, which is synthetics. So yeah. I, I have a scripted browser running in New Relic, which is requesting 200 pages every minute from 20 locations around the world. So it's, head, it's hitting a lot of traffic at that site to generate these traffic for the dashboards for me. And I have to give Netlify um, some praise here. Like I have a hundred percent success rate. <laughs> so 1.6 million page requests in the last week and all of them have succeeded. Everything's A-OK, -okay, Aaron. It says it right there. -okay. <laughs> So with the dashboard then, other things we have, um, traffic, all of my traffic is going to come from the CM like sources and things, which we'll see, actually, sorry, that's under users here. You know, we can see it's all coming from, you know, desktop, it's all coming from Chrome because all of my traffic is coming from these automated um, synthetics. It's you know, my page load, OS, everything's going to be the same. This would be a different breakdown on a real site because you'd have a mixture of different devices, et cetera. All of mine are going to be, are going to be the same device. 
Um, but it will break it down by like country and city for you. Um, ASN is essentially your ISP. So you can see like, you know, what ISPs are the fastest where you're coming in from, which cities, which countries, you know. So if you do have any performance issues in a particular region, you'll be able to see that here. Um, you can even see like what days of the week are busiest, you know. So when are people visiting wow. your site? You know, and then break my obviously my breakdown by by hour. Your bots are is, busy every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really consistent. Yeah. I, I, love that you're pointing, you know? I love that you're pointing this out though. Like this is nuanced, but I've certainly done this before in a past life too. So like synthetics can be so great for uh simulating traffic for alerting so that you can like learn about a problem before yep. your real users get impacted and it escalates etc um so that's awesome but the other side thing is like you basically have the ability to script these bots to speed demo traffic into your projects <laughs> so I, I love that yeah. we're, we're using it for both purposes here that's uh that's great <laughs> And, and uh, for most people, they're not going to be running synthetics at the, at the level I am. Like I, I have it running from 20 locations around the world that running the script wow. every minute. And every time the script runs, it fetches, um, I think, 10 or 100 pages. I can't remember one of the two. So it's going to be a lot of traffic. Normally, if you're doing synthetic tests, you might you know, run it every 15 minutes or every hour or whatever. It's going to be rare you're going to be running this volume. But I should also say, this is on a, this is not on like my... I don't have any privileged access as a, I do not on this account, but this account is just a regular user account. It's a regular free user account as well, I should point out. So mm -hmm. everything I'm doing here, this is not because like I've got some crazy admin level access um, at New Relic. This is on my personal email account and this is just a free account and everything here, you can go sign up today and start using. Yeah. Um, cool. Other things then, Core Web Vitals is, is kind of fun. I know this is like, one of your areas that you're really interested in as well. These are um, so fun to me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this is this is the performance. We you have your like your your actual performance and you have your perceived performance. You know, right. so your actual performance could be your web server could be serving up your page in like a microsecond, but if you're rendering in the browser takes thirty seconds then your perceived performance to your user is 30 seconds. They don't care how fast your server can send like the content to the page if they can't interact with it. So that's why we measure things like first input delay, you know, first content filled paint. That's the, the first time you see something rendered to the screen. You know, it would be an image or some text or some first time the user sees, oh, this page is loading. It's not just like a plain white page anymore. There is something there. That's your FCP, your first content filled paint. Um, and in your first input delay is how long it takes from a user clicking on an element to that element, like responding essentially. So hmm. these are all things that affect that perceived performance, not just your actual like web server performance. So these are really important for, for tracking how your users are going to, um, are going to feel about your site and how, how quickly they think your site's reacting to things. Um, I love it. So super important for Jamstack sites. And another yeah. thing that's super important for Jamstack sites is JavaScript errors as well. So I, the pages are throwing up random errors all the time. Um, we can see kind of error trends and stuff here. What we can also do is like drill down into those. So I have my errors inbox here, for example, mm -hmm. and also give me all of the errors that you're seeing. I can click on one. It's going to tell me what release it was. So that's that release ID we talked about earlier. So I can identify exactly what deployment causes error. Um, and it's also going to tell me where it was as well. So all of these error, all of the JavaScript I've written is just inline to, to generate these. So we can see which file it came through here. And then we can also see what line is causing it too. So we can go like wow. really nail down exactly where this exception is being raised. Um, and then the final one is the build events. So this allows me to track, you know, when, when did my last build start? When did my last build finish? I know. So all of my builds are like, there's no, I don't have any feeling builds at the moment, um, which is great. But if I did, then it would show me, you know, like how many builds I started, how many succeeded, how many failed, and I will get a comparison compared to yesterday or last week or whatever time frame I want to put on it. So I lots of like this. really you know, useful. I think this is so cool yeah. because like in Netlify, we give you data as you're, about your build as it's happening, but we don't chart it out like this. And so like, I can just imagine this for my marketing team, you know, it would be like, oh, we almost always deploy on Fridays or like, 
the builds only fail on Monday when Melanie is publishing a blog. Like, what is Melanie doing wrong? Like, you could really learn a lot about your team's process by charting it out this way. Uh, so I just think that's so cool that you pulled those markers through to be able to do that. Um, yeah, very cool. And all the data is, is as well as in the dashboards, like it's all available um, in New Relic as well. The build are just custom events. So like you would do for anything else in New Relic, you can create alerts um, from them. So if you wanted to create an alert for any time a build field and have it like send you a text message or uh, put something in Slack or whatever other way you do your notifications, you can, all of that stuff's in there as well. Um, and the quick start will create three alerts for you, um, one for, field builds and one for like a degradation in um, page load times and one for JavaScript uh, errors. So they'll all be created for you. You just need to go and activate them as well. All part of the same quick start. Nice. Well, and I know like this may be kind of previewing where we're going in the future, but like, are there other things <laughs> you can do with those deploy IDs? <laughs> So there are, yeah, so um, as well as what we call release IDs, these things that we saw in the JavaScript errors here, mm -hmm. um, or sorry, on the actual error page, these ones. So we tag the JavaScript bundle with these release IDs, um, but New Relic also has a concept of a deployment marker. Um, the deployment markers, they, at the moment, they're only, you'll see them in certain graphs. It'll be like just a vertical line through the graph going, this is when a new deployment happened. And they're really great for then showing you, you know, if there's a sudden spike in a graph that, oh, okay, well, I can see a deployment happened and then suddenly my response times have gone up really high or my error rates are through the roof or whatever. And you know, it gives you a good correlation then between that deployment and what you're seeing in the graphs. App currently, the deployment markers um, are not available in custom graphs. So you couldn't have them on your dashboards. Um, so not, not super useful for what we're doing here, um, but, it is in the works. We are going to be um, launching deployment markers where you'll be able to have them on custom graphs. So if you have them in your own dashboards, and they're already in the plugin. Like it, the plugin will generate deployment markers for you. It's not documented, um, so you will have to kind of like go look at the the, manif the manifest file to find it. Um, but the code's already there. It will generate deployment markers. So as soon as they're switched on for the dashboards, I can uh, we can also have them in the plugin. Or if you're feeling a little bit adventurous and you want to start recording your deployment markers now, so you have them uh, retroactively for whenever they're enabled, you can actually, you can start doing that with a plugin too, but Brilliant. keep it secret. This is keep it secret, keep it safe. And we do keep all <laughs> these secrets safe. <laughs> um, this is great. So, you know, is there anything else that you want to share with us about the plugin or the quick start or just new relic in general, before we kind of move on to the, the next thing so we can make time for Q and A? Yeah, yeah. So the the plugin um it's still under under active development. It's what we call um it's on our new relic experimental um, organization. So that's where things that we are developing in public and we are actively seeking people's um kind of feedback or uh you know wish list items for it that kind of stuff. My the current thing that's on kind of top of my priority list next is to simplify the installation procedure. So rather than having, you know, we when we looked at this list of mm -hmm. settings uh, that we had to put in here, if I just go back to my settings All your range, environment you know, variables, there was, there was, yeah. All my environment variables, there was quite a few, you know, because it does a lot of different things. So, and some of these can be, you know, a pain in the butt to find sometimes like your browser license key. Um, so I'm modifying it to be almost exactly the same as log drains where it will just be your user ID and a single license key. And then the plugin will go off and create all the other um, license keys and things you need for it. So we should be shrinking this number of requirements down um, quite considerably in the future. Um, that's like my big priority item. Other people will be like, hey, I really wish we could do X, Y, Z. Awesome. Go create an issue. Um, I, I, I'm the maintainer on it. I will get those issues personally. Mm -hmm. I will be more than happy to get any feedback. That is awesome. So making it a little bit less like a, a, a scavenger hunt and a little bit more turnkey. <laughs> exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, we're all about making things easier for developers, so. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. Like, it was just really good to have you here to explain the nuances of this. And I am so glad that you did choose to venture into trying to build that plugin, even though Me it too. wasn't 
Python. Um, it just turned <laughs> out great. And I think it's really going to help a lot of teams, especially people who are already using New Relic. Uh, I did see a, a question come up about whether or not you can run those, those New Relic synthetics on the free plan. My guess is yes, up to a certain amount. Uh, can you speak a little bit yeah, about uh so I, I, like, as I mentioned, the, um, that account I'm running with Synthetics on is just a free trial account. And it's on my personal email address. Um, and I'm running those, like, uh, let's let's see what my, we can just look at the settings here um, in general. So I have them running up every minute and I have them, let's look at my locations and every public location that we have. Um, so that is the, I think, the most frequent period that you can run a uh, Synthetic on. And the most locations are public locations that you can run synthetic in, and I'm running that on a free account. So, and that's not the only synthetic I'm running. I have, I have a lot of synthetics actually. Um, so, yeah, so so I have a lot of synthetics. It is something you can try for free today. Yeah, it awesome. is something you can try for free today. Um, yeah, anything, anything I've done or shown today is all available on that that uh, free account. Beautiful. All right, Aaron, I am going to steal the screen from you to breeze through Go one last topic before we break into Q&A. And I will try to move swiftly for us so we have time to get to questions and answers at the end. Um, let me go ahead and steal that screen back. And I'm going to share this and get into slideshow mode here. So the, the last, we've looked a lot about how to observe your traffic, how to grab data, how to trend things over time, how to do alerts. Um, but we haven't talked a lot about optimization or just the fundamentals of like delivering your application and your content for maximum performance. So before we get into Q&A, I just want to really quickly share with you some of the things I think about when it comes to optimization and also some details about Netlify's high performance edge network, which might make sense for your project. So we'll go fast, but here's, here's kind of what I would recommend. Like optimization is an art and a science, right? Like you have to make decisions about the trade-offs in your application, what's important to your team. But often over and over again, these are the areas that I see as being places for quick wins um, and things that you should think about that you can control. <laughs> these are the things within your control when you are developing your application and choosing your architecture and, and your services. So number one, I'm always thinking about image optimization so much actually just like praise to um, the man who created the GIF, like just little moment of silence there. Um, GIF is like one of my favorite things is a meme that's a GIF. The graphical image format was never intended to be used the way we use it today. So like think about your image formats, like make sure that they are performant, modern image formats. Um, image optimization serve the smallest size possible. You know, we've always been there, all been there where like you open the thumbnail and it's like taking up your whole screen, right? So thinking about serving the right size image using the right format that's gonna be fast and performant, that can really give you huge performance gains. Think about your CSS, think about your JavaScript, right? Every little snippet that you put on your page is gonna be making your app a little bit slower to load. So you need to think about your budget. Like uh, for example, I might wanna create space in my JavaScript budget for that new Relic browser agent because it's super important for me to be able to observe my traffic. Yes, I'm gonna take a little bit of hit having that JavaScript running, but it's critical to my business. So I optimize around that. If you have other third-party tools that you were using a long time ago that are no longer relevant to you, clean them out, clear those out, get rid of that JavaScript. Don't just leave things sitting on your website. I think that's such a, a common problem, especially for people working on marketing sites or e-commerce stores. Every campaign has a little script or snippet and those can really build up over time and they're, they're like plaque on your, uh, on your website. So be careful about that. And you know, inline your CSS, that's gonna help you get those things like that uh, first container Tentful paint really fast, you know, don't have like one mega huge CSS style sheet that's going to block the whole page loading. You know, there are people who make like this, their full-time job, just optimizing, making your website faster. But some of these things are within your control immediately. Then think about what you can automate. So like yesterday in session number two, we were talking a lot about build plugins. Netlify has build plugins that can automatically optimize your images. You can use Image Optum or Cloudinary. Um, we also have that Lighthouse plugin so you can get your performance scores before and after every deploy. Figure out what you can automate so that you don't have to do those manual tasks every single time you ship your site. 
but there's only so much that you can do within your own optimization if you're not serving your traffic from a really good delivery network. Uh, so that's like, once you've exhausted all of your options, you've done as much as you can, you need to push it and get better results. So when we start thinking about, does it make sense for your team to have high performance edge? High performance edge is available as an enterprise product, but it's not just for enterprise companies. It's for anybody that needs their website to be super fast, reliable, and performant from all around the globe. And what makes this different from Netlify's standard edge network is it's got an uptime SLA. We do more proactive DDoS mitigation. So you're not on a shared network. Um, and like, you know, on the standard edge, if you just start getting attacked, we might take your site down to protect other people that are on that node with you. On HP edge, it's much more proactive. Your site's not gonna just get taken offline if you start to get under attack. Um, and it's gonna have smarter routing rules. All of this yields faster page load times, which, are good for those core web vitals, which is good for your SEO, which is good for your conversions. So just be thinking about this as an option. If you need a boost, talk to us about High Performance Edge. We'd love to do a comparison for you. We can even use synthetics to run a comparison so you can really see the real differences uh, before you, you run this forever. So using tools like New Relic or other synthetic providers, we can get you a chart so you can see the difference. So if this is something that's important to your team, reach out for us for proof of concept. We would love to uh, look at it and see if it'd be a good fit for you. All right, so that's the end of my pitch for HB Edge. Let's break into Q&A. Um, and I don't see any questions in the Q&A right now. Does anybody here have a question that they wanna get addressed? It's now or never. So I did see one come up in the, the chat that, um, from Bob Smith that I probably should address. It's a, I see a really good question. Bob was asking all those environment variables that I, that I yes. set, those kind of like secret keys, um, are now getting written out into the HTML for that, that browser snippet. Ah. And um, yeah, I, Bob is right Like he, to ask, is this an issue? For those keys, it's not an issue. So things okay. like the account ID, trust key, agent ID, um, application ID, those are all public. You know, they're they are just your uh, New Relic user ID essentially. So right. there's no problem at all with those being um, in the, the HTML. The um, license key is a browser license key. That's it's why we have all those different kind of keys. So whenever we were looking at like the environment settings I was creating, I had both an ingest key and I had a browser ingest key. Um, one allows me to send custom events, which is how we track like the build events. And that is that stays on Netlify servers. It's never like uh, written into the HTML or anything. And then we have the browser license key, and that is the one that's safe to put into into your HTML. Can be shared publicly. The only I thing somebody sense. can do with that is generate, you know, new browser data. Um, yeah, yeah. Client. I mean, that makes sense. So that would be like. Yeah. So thank you so <laughs> much for calling this out, Aaron. I saw this come through earlier. I was also curious. So the the key that you really need to be secret is secret. But the other keys are things like like when you inspect the page, you can see the account key like on that snippet, right? So exactly. it's kind of public anyway. But like you know, it's not opening up the door for an attack. Mm -hmm. So okay, cool. and that's and that's why we have multiple different types of keys um, in New Relic with different kind of security levels, different things that they can access. I'll drop a link in the chat to everybody that goes free, kind of like all our different kind of API keys that are available and a little bit more information about each one and you know what access the user could have of each key. So you'll know kind of like, okay, these are the ones that you know I really should be keeping secret. Are these the ones, you know, it's okay for it to be um, in the client because it can only it only has a very limited um, amount of access. Yep, cool. Okay, I am gonna answer these questions. Um, I see a, a few come through. I'm gonna get to the first one. So we had somebody anonymous on the line uh, and they asked very good questions. So is our DDoS protection for normal clients to take the site down? And I would say that if you are on the standard edge network and not the high performance edge network, and there is a risk that an attack to your site could negatively impact the other customers, uh, yes, like you're in a scenario where there is no guarantee that your site will stay up. That's not part of that service package. And so you do need to be aware that if you are running, like I would not 
run a production site on the standard edge network if that was a consideration. Um, so that's just something to think about that that is that is absolutely the case. So I will make that clear. Um, the other thing is, do the synthetics you run affect your page speed or the new Relic JavaScript snippet told the same no matter what? Um, well, I, I think I'm going to try to answer this one and then Ari and I might ask you to for some help, but synthetics do not affect your page speed. They're a bot going in from the outside. So like they don't actually alter your application in any way that would increase the load time. Right, like they're they're completely uh, hands off <laughs> in terms. Uh, they don't they don't alter your application, so they would not affect your page speed. Um, the JavaScript snippet for the browser solution could be something that you need to factor into your performance budget. Is that the right way to describe it? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. The, the synthetics, especially using the scripted browser, is exciting. Exactly that. It is a browser, a headless Chrome browser um, that you can script. So you can the my synthetics I have generate all that traffic are really simple. They just do a get on the page and that's it. You can have it fetch the page and then fill in a form and submit a button and visit a link. And it's just it's interacting with your website the exact same way a user would in the browser, except instead of you using your mouse and clicking around, you've just written it in code. But it's yeah. still using the same Chrome browser in the exact same ways. Um, the tool for the new Relic uh, JS snippet, running any additional client side code is going to have some um, performance impact. Uh, we try to limit it as much as we can um, because we don't we we want to we want to be measuring um, things without hopefully impacting too too heavily on them. Uh, and we do as we get our script loaded in first so that we're not then impacting the rest of the page load time afterwards. Get an accurate measure of those. Um, so yeah, we do we do really think about performance optimizations on our own script. We try to keep it as lean as possible. We try to ensure that it's not having a too large an impact on page performance. But yeah, any additional code, any additional code, yeah. whether it is just a console log, is going to have some impact um, on, on your page. It might be very min minuscule, but it's going to have some. Yeah, I just find that's kind of part of the game. So, you know, there, there are trade offs there. But again, like, mm -hmm. you know, what's the win? Like, if you don't have any way to get observability, then if your site goes offline, like, <laughs> you're not alerted, right? So, like, you, you need to find that balance <laughs> of what's important for your project. Um, this question, I don't know the answer to. So, I'm going to ask you, Aaron. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think I kind of do, but uh, does New Relic work with other things? Like we're super focused on Netlify today, but like, what if what if I got an Azure app or AWS app? Like New Relic works for me, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. New, New Relic. Um, so I I don't know the figure off the top of my head for our instant observability. Um, I can probably go and look it up though. But I think so. The quick starts is a is a great example um, of like things where we have those pre-configured dashboards and stuff. And I think at the moment we have somewhere in the region of like 400 of those already created. Um, IO only launched two months ago. So mm -hmm. that's just the pre-configured ones. Beyond that, if like you can install New Relic pretty much anywhere. Um, so we have what we call our, our application performance um, monitors or APM agents mm -hmm. in a variety of languages. You know, we've got them for Java, Python, Nodes, um, C, C++, .NET, probably other ones I'm forgetting. They work with a, with a variety of web frameworks um, out of the box as well. You, no configuration needed. We actually have a guided install, which is super cool, where you just run a, um, a command on your server and we will go and try and find all the things in your server, whether it be programming languages, web frameworks, databases, servers, all the different kind of like common infrastructure elements will be like, hey, we find all of these things. Would you like us to start monitoring them and monitor them for you? And we'll auto configure our agents to do that. But even beyond that, if there's something you're running that's proprietary that we couldn't possibly have a pre-built agent for, because it's like your secret internal code for your, your company, um, all of our agents as well uh, have an SDK, so you can like write your own code for them and integrate them into your own applications. Or we also have a um, API, so we have both a REST API and a GraphQL API, um, so you can send the data in that way if you prefer. Like, really, it'll if if 
whatever you're working on, if it can make some kind of HTTP request, <laughs> you can probably integrate New Relic with it. Fantastic. Okay. Well, Aaron, I can't believe, I feel like the time flew by. I was just having way too much fun yeah. on all these topics. I'm so, so sorry if you did ask the question and we didn't get to it. I will try to follow up with you or make sure you get those answers. But uh, thank you everybody who did send questions over. Uh, we're, we're at time. So uh, Aaron, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for building a plugin. I do hope people will go and engage with the repo and, you know, uh, participate in that open source community and, you know, push to make it better. Um, and then again, if you were here and you're thinking about maybe you want high performance edge because uh, by default, Netlify apps are served on the standard CDN and you think that you need something a little bit more serious, uh, please do consider hitting up that QR code. Or if you think log dreams might be a fit for you, uh, you can reach out to our team. We'd love to hear about your project and make sure that you're on the right network with the right tools and integrations for your business. Um, so that is it. And thank you, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, we'll see you on the web. Thanks, folks.